While Democrats in Washington try to reach a deal on the Build Back Better Act, Democrats in neighboring Virginia are trying to hold on to the governor's office. Virginia has been steadily turning blue. The state went for Joe Biden by 10 points in 2020. It hasn't had a Republican governor since 2014, but polls show Democrat Terry McAuliffe and Republican Glenn Youngkin in a dead heat for the election, which is this upcoming Tuesday. If Youngkin wins, that will be a humongous deal for the Republican Party. It could also give them a playbook for 2022 and 2024. And so the playbook seems to go something like this. Run a candidate who supports Donald Trump, but who is a little bit smoother and less offensive. Someone who can appeal to the establishment Republicans and, you know, those suburban white moms. Check. Youngkin is a former businessman who looks like any other suburban dad. Second step. Use racist dog whistles. Check. A new Youngkin ad suggests that reading Toni Morrison's Pulitzer Prize winning novel, Beloved, harms white high school students and that parents will lose all control over their local schools if Terry McAuliffe wins. Also, make sure you don't alienate those Trump supporters, but make sure also that you don't appear with Donald Trump in public. Check again. This is a Checklist. You get it? President Biden had a little fun with that dynamic when he campaigned for Terry McAuliffe last night. Terry's opponent has made all of his private pledges of loyalty to Donald Trump. But what's really interesting to me, he won't stand next to Donald Trump now that the campaign's on. <laughs> Think about it. He won't allow Donald Trump to campaign for him in this state. And he's willing to pledge his loyalty to Trump in private. Why not in public? What's he trying to hide? Is there a problem with Trump being here? Is he embarrassed? It's a good question. Why won't Glenn Youngkin appear with Donald Trump in public? And will that matter to Donald Trump's diehard supporters? Joining me now is Kurt Bardella. He's an advisor to the Democratic National Committee and the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. He wrote a piece for USA Today about the Republican strategy in the state of Virginia. Also with us is Bracton Booker, the national political correspondent for Politico. Kurt, I'm gonna start with you. Um, if Youngkin wins, what will that mean for Republicans and Democrats going into the 2022 midterms? I know that's a big if, but lay it, out, lay it all out for us. Well, I think that if, if Youngkin wins, and, it's, and you kind of set it up perfectly here, Zerlina, it gives a blueprint for Republicans of what type of candidate they need, what type of style, tone, theme, appearance they need to try to run the table in the 2022 elections and really in 2024 as well. That if they can put a, a, a better veneer on Trumpism, they can trick voters into thinking that, oh, this isn't Donald Trumpism. This is something more palpable, more acceptable, more mainstream. Glenn Youngkin represents the mainstreaming of Trumpism. And that's really what's at stake here coming up on Tuesday in the election. I think for Democrats, really, no matter what the outcome ends up being, the message really is loud and clear that we need to do a better job, a more concerted, targeted, organized job of branding the Republican Party for what it is. Republicans have spent the better part of two decades now running really a brand offensive against the Democratic Party. This is why they call everything that the Democrats do socialism. It's why everything is about the border. It's why everything is geared around fear. You need to be afraid of policies. They're here to take things away from you. Well, Democrats need to respond in kind. And unlike the Republican Party, we don't have to make stuff up. We could just tell the truth about what the Republican Party is. And fundamentally, right now, they have presented themselves to be the greatest existential threat to democracy, to freedom, to choice, to liberty that this country has ever seen. One of the things that you said that's interesting is, is about the fact that they've branded the Democratic Party um, as socialists, and I think that's a really, really um, poignant, uh, uh, it's, it's a really good point, um, and it's nuanced a bit, because I actually, I don't hear socialism, Kurt, when, when they say that. I actually feel like their voter, like, sees a black person. You know, the border, that's obvious, obviously a more, more uh, direct 
uh, imagery. But do you think that the socialist label is actually just like a placeholder for like a Democrat who helps black people through government policies? Yeah, like here's the bottom line. In Republican language, socialism is code for they're taking things from white people and giving it to others, to people who look like you and I. That's what them, that, that, that's the fear that they're trying to evoke when they use that label. And again, Republicans have gotten very polished about trying to hide their overt racism. But every now and again, they, the truth comes out. When you, when you have someone like Youngkin, whose closing argument is I wanna ban books I want to I want to attack the idea that we represent in any accurate way the racism that has existed in our country and how we teach and talk about that. I mean, that's taking a big billboard saying, "Hey, if you elect me, I'm going to be your racist educator in chief." That's what he's saying. And so we just can't let them off the hook anymore and, and get away with with that veneer, that this imaginary, you know, really misdirection magic game that they try to play with the voters. I think that Democrats in general going forward need to be blunt. They need to be consistent. They need to be repetitious about it and, and brand the Republican Party for what it is. Bracton, one of the things about this race that I think is surprising to people is how close it is when Joe Biden won Virginia by 10 points and it's been blue for the past couple of election cycles. I worked here for an organizer uh, in 2000, as an organizer for Obama in 2008. And so this actually in some ways reminds me of the narrowing that happened even in that cycle. It, it happens every cycle. Why is it though, do you think, this race in particular between these two candidates, it's not just any Democrat, it's Terry McCullough for former Democratic governor, is so close. Well, look, uh, what a difference a, a year makes, right? Uh, Trump is no longer on the ballot. Trump is not in the White House. So you don't have that kind of foil to play against, even though obviously uh, President Biden yesterday uh, was trying to uh, do what Terry McAuliffe has been doing uh, throughout this race and try to tie uh, Glenn Youngkin to Trump, right? That you coined the phrase kind of Trumpkin, right? And, and so far, it doesn't seem to have worked in, 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 in really as any, any great detail there, right? This, the, the race is still close. And, uh, you know, Biden is not the most popular guy in politics right now. So I think that doesn't really help uh, help uh, Terry McAuliffe's uh, uh, chances either. And I gotta say, look, politics is 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 a game where where popularity ma matters. And you know, Terry McAuliffe is not the new guy on the block. He's not young and fresh. He's a guy trying to get his old job back. So when you try to factor in all those factors, Trump not being on the ballot, you know, enthusiasm for Democrats maybe waning a bit, and now you have this this tightening of a race. And I, I also say that you know, uh, Tur. To Kurt's point, I, I believe that Youngkin has run probably the best race that he probably could in Virginia, right? He's distanced himself physically from Trump, but the mm -hmm. the, the tactics that he's using are, are very Trumpian. And he's using surrogates to really talk to the to the MAGA crowd while while Youngkin is trying to appeal to to folks who may be kind of disillusioned with the Democrats right now. So that's why you see the, the tightening of the race and why it's a dead heat less than a week before election day. In, in some ways, Glenn Youngkin, you know, he is a smoother uh, Trump. His com I, I see a lot of his commercials, Kurt, in here in Virginia. Um, so <laughs> I can actually say that from experience, I've seen a lot of his ads. And it's a much smoother message. But, but especially in the last few weeks here, when the conversation turned to, you know, Tara McAuliffe doesn't want parents to have a say in, the, their ch in your child's education. And really the implication being... Um, that, you know, you're going to learn all this stuff about critical race theory and Terry McAuliffe doesn't want you to be able to tell your school um, it can't do that, basically, is the subtext. I mean, how, mm -hmm. how does a Democrat run against that the next time? Um, if, if Terry McAuliffe um, is not successful, and we don't know what's going to happen, but if it turns out he's not successful, what lesson should be gleaned from the way that he's run this race against, basically, a Trump light? Well, I think, first of all, we need to start a little bit earlier 
uh, you know, I feel like we've had a couple cycles, whether it was California Recall or, or Virginia, where kind of the alarm goes off, uh, you know, in the final month. And you know, like you, I live in Virginia, so I've been seeing Glenn Youngkin ads for months on every freaking TV station and every show that I watch. And so I think part of it is you know, we we can't take anything for granted anymore. We need to fight every every race like it is a battleground contested race, and we need to start a little bit earlier in that fight. And again, it goes back to branding the Democrats. Glenn Youngkin, as far as policies go, as far as his rhetoric goes, he is Donald Trump just wearing a fleece vest. The things that he is advocating for, the agenda that he is running on, is a radical, extreme agenda that's rooted in white nationalism and overt racism. That's just what it is. And I think that we need to be calling it out for what it is. I think one of the major mistakes that Youngkin has made in the final closing moments of this campaign is allowing himself to be tied to people like Steve Bannon to, to an event where they hailed and celebrated a flag that was flown on January 6th. That's the real Glenn Youngkin. Well, the fleece vest um, is definitely not something Donald Trump ever wore. You're right. It's, it, it is a change, um, but it doesn't matter what vest you're wearing if, if your ideas are hateful um, and the people are praising a flag from the insurrection. That is very alarming and dangerous. And Kurt Bardella and Bracton Booker, I, I appreciate both of you for being here, helping us do a little analysis of this race, which is still a week away. If you're in Virginia, early vote. You can early vote until October the 30th. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.